Rory Calhoun was a Golden Age movie star who got his start in the industry thanks to David O. Selznick. He starred in a great many classic films during his time, including 1953's How to Marry a Millionaire. He appeared alongside starlet Betty Grable in the film, and Betty would later be called out during Rory's first divorce as one of nearly a hundred women the star had extramarital affairs with. Join Facts First as we explore how Rory Calhoun turned his life around from convicted criminal. Rory Calhoun was born August 8, 1922 in LA. His father was a professional gambler, and this alternative way of life seems to have had quite the effect on the young boy. Though there was nothing inherently illegal about what his father was doing, the craving for a high-risk lifestyle was passed on to the boy. At age 13, Rory stole a gun and was caught with it by the authorities. He was sent to the Preston School of Industry, located in California. It was a notable youth reformatory, but it had trouble holding Rory Calhoun. Rory couldn't get himself to behave in the facility, so he was forced into solitary confinement. There's a legend that he managed to escape the school during his time in solitary. Before he was of age, Rory was living with his mother. But his penchant for misbehavior was continuing to grow. Because of this, the young man often received vicious beatings from his stepfather. At age 17, Rory ran away from the beatings he was receiving at home to a life of crime. As the story goes, Rory ran away from his mother's home at 17, robbed a handful of jewelry stores, hot-wired a car, and then made off across state lines. The future star must have assumed that fleeing the state would significantly decrease his chances of getting caught. But all it did was make it so the consequences were worse when the authorities inevitably tracked him down. Due to the fact that he took himself and stolen goods across state lines, the crimes he committed were considered federal offenses. The teenager was forced to serve three years at the U.S. Medical Center for Federal Prisoners in Missouri. By age 21, Rory was ready to live righteously. Rory Calhoun was ready to be let go from prison around the same time he was gearing up to turn 21. Having spent so many of his early years behind bars, Rory decided he had no interest in returning to a life of crime once he got out. Instead, he did his best to find an honest trade for himself that he'd be a good fit for. He was rumored to have tried out a number of professions during these years, including fishing and fighting forest fires. In 1944, Rory met Alan Ladd. Alan was an incredibly popular actor. He allegedly met him during a horseback riding excursion. Alan was apparently impressed by the man's physicality. He saw something in Rory that he thought would translate well to the screen. Though most know Alan as a notable actor from Hollywood's golden age, some also know him as married to a talent scout named Sue Carroll from 1942 until 1964 when he died. Sue was just as impressed by Rory's physicality. She used her industry connections to get Rory a screen test at 20th Century Fox. It resulted in the actor receiving a few uncredited roles in their productions. According to Rory, he didn't think much would come out of his little venture into Hollywood, but he liked how much money he was getting for relatively easy work. The actor assumed he was going to receive a handful of small roles on screen and then return back to his life as a laborer. Let's talk about the sponsor for today's video, Aura. Aura is an all-in-one solution to protect you from identity theft online. It includes identity theft protection, fraud monitoring, a VPN, password management, and antivirus software all wrapped up into one easy to use app. If you're not using every single one of these tools to protect yourself, you're going to have a weak spot. It's like making sure your front door is locked, but leaving your back door wide open for intruders. Aura continuously monitors the dark web for any of your personal information, and they'll send you an alert the moment they find anything. I was shocked to find out that several of my login credentials were found on the dark web, and I wouldn't have known this without Aura. If you're active online, it's nearly impossible to protect all of your personal information unless you're using a tool like Aura. This is exactly why there are so many victims of cybercrime and identity theft. In fact, identity theft is so common, there's a new victim every 14 seconds. That means at least three people have had their identity stolen since I started talking about Aura in this video. So if you want to protect yourself and your family from identity theft, go to Aura.com slash Faxverse. By visiting this URL or clicking the link in the description, you can get a 14-day free trial of Aura and start getting protection today. How Rory Calhoun Became a Hollywood Star Meeting Alan Ladd and his talent scout wife got Rory the chance to transition from being a hard-laboring ex-con to an uncredited background actor on screen for 20th Century Fox. 
but it was legendary Golden Age producer David O. Selznick who turned him into a star. Rory's connection to him began when he met a man named Henry Wilson at a party. Henry was an agent known for working with David O. Selznick. Like Alan and his wife, Henry saw something in Rory. On Henry's recommendation, Rory signed a contract with David O. Selznick Vanguard Films. Prior to signing with Vanguard, the actor had actually been known by another name. Rory was born Francis McCown. It was Selznick who came up with the stage name of Rory Calhoun. Allegedly, David came up with the first name of Rory because it sounded like the word roar. He apparently thought this word association would suggest to the audience that Rory was like a lion. David Oselznik set about making the ex-con into a star. Rory's first mission under contract with Vanguard Films was to accompany Lana Turner to the premiere of the 1945 Alfred Hitchcock film Spellbound. Lana and Alfred were already big deals in the entertainment industry, and everyone was curious to learn about the new man accompanying the starlet to the huge event. David Oselznik gave Rory Calhoun lots of freedom. As a result of his appearance alongside Lana Turner, everyone in the press was talking about Rory Calhoun. He was getting positive attention, but also some negative attention when he got into trouble with the law again after apparently punching a detective. As a result, he was put back in prison. Once he got out, he started appearing in films. The incident with the detective was a small slip-up, but Rory kept his head cool for the rest of his career. Some of his earliest features included That Hagen Girl, where he played third lead to the notable duo of Ronald Reagan and Shirley Temple. David Oselznik wasn't afraid to let Rory work with other studios. In 1950, he signed a seven-year contract with 20th Century Fox that saw him star in classic pictures like How to Marry a Millionaire. The film featured Rory playing the love interest of starlet Betty Grable. Today, How to Marry a Millionaire is considered Rory's biggest film. A year after playing Betty Grable's love interest, Rory got to play the boyfriend of Marilyn Monroe in the film River of No Return. But his character ended up losing Marilyn's character to a competing love interest played by actor Robert Mitchum. In the mid-50s, Rory appeared in some Western films for Universal Pictures. These included Four Guns to the Border and Red Sundown. By the time he was working with Universal Pictures, he was said to have been making around $75,000 per feature. Rory started up his own production company in 1957. By 1957, Rory had become a massive Hollywood star. He used his clout to start up his own production company called Rorvik Productions. The production company produced several Western films during the late 50s, and Rory also continued appearing in Western works for other studios. In 1958, Rory was cast to play the lead role in the Western TV series The Texan. He was allegedly cast at the behest of Desi Arnaz. The series ran for two seasons. After that ended, Rory continued working largely within both television and the Western genre. He made notable guest appearances on Gunsmoke and Bonanza, and also appeared in the 1961 Sergio Leone film The Colossus of Rhodes. In the mid-60s, he made several Western films with producer A.C. Lyles and was considered for the role of one of the leads on the TV series The Wild Wild West. He continued working until the 90s, with his final role being in the 1992 film Pure Country. Other notable roles he had during his later life include his villainous turn in the cult classic 1980 horror Motel Hell, as well as a stint on the soap opera Capital. The actor was married to two women over the course of his life, though he married his second wife twice. Upon his first divorce, Rory's first wife alleged that the star had cheated on her with nearly a hundred women. According to Rory, this wasn't even the half of it. He passed away from diabetes in 1999 at age 76. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite role from Rory Calhoun? Let us know in the comments section below.